Hello, everybody. Welcome to the uh, third Google Photography Prize uh, Hangout with Photography Experts. Today, we're hanging out with um, Eleanor Carucci, uh, an incredible photographer who's been doing incredible work for, for many, many years, and in particular, in the field of self-portraiture. Um, she's developed a, a very strong reputation and, a, and a, an incredible um, career and creative practice, specifically through kind of portraying herself and portraying relationships between herself and her family members, her, her friends, her boyfriend who turned into her husband, her children, and so on. So um, her parents. Um, so, um, so today's conversation is going to revolve primarily around um, photography, obviously, in general, and the the, the power photography has to allow us to express ourselves, but in particular, I'm interested in talking about how um, people use self-portraiture as a means of not only self-documentation, but also self-expression. So to start with, I just was wondering if um, maybe Eleanor could tell us a little bit about um, how she first came to photography and um, how she also started beginning to, to photograph herself and becoming comfortable with that as a form of, of uh, expressing herself as well as documenting her, her herself. So Eleanor, please. <laughs> so, I mean, I started, I started young and I actually started by photographing my mother. Um, I took my father's camera and started taking snapshots of my mother as she woke up from an afternoon nap. And I was immediately in love with photography and started to photograph her more. And then my father, and then started making self-portraits. Um, I was doing it in black and white with my, as I said, father, old Canon. And later on, I did the Israeli army service for two years. And after that, went to art school and continued to photograph my family using a lot of self-portraiture as well. I, I think what kept me there was realizing how much more I see about myself and the relationships and I mean, and my life through photographing myself. So it was like, looking into your dreams. Um, you can freeze a frame from a dream that helps you understand who you are and how you relate to the people you love most, how they relate to you. So it's a form of self-discovering, I would say. I think with my mom, the most interesting thing was that I was able to look at her not as my mother. I could look at what kind of a woman she is, her sexuality, her looks, the relationship between her and my father. <clears throat> and at time I felt like I'm giving them stage uh, to show me who they are. They also began to be interested in being photographed in a specific way. They had requests and demands and it was also a way for them to express themselves. And I felt that when I'm joining to the frame, something is even becoming more, I'm not the photographer behind the camera doing whatever I want. I'm also vulnerable. I'm also showing something about myself and, and, and it's a different dynamic. I think, and it's something that Nan Golden talked about that when you are also photographing yourself naked or also photographing your flaws, it becomes something that you do to yourself and to the environment. So it doesn't put, put you in the like powerful position of being the photographer that just looking at other people you're becoming a part of it. It opens up the people you photograph. It's a different feeling. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm just curious if either of our participants, I mean, do either of you make photographs? And, and if, if so, what kind of photographs? And if you actually photograph yourself anytime? I do some photography, but most of them is more for the artistic and documentary reason. Okay. Yeah, I photograph my family, oh, yeah, my mom. <laughs> and myself, so yeah, most of that is just for capturing the time and also reflecting it in more artistic way. I mean, show it in a kind of different perspective because before we used to live in Russia and the life there was pretty different and here it's kind of more easy. So through these pictures in a quite aesthetic way, it is possible to enhance this change of life. Okay. And because my mother changed in a way and she became um, kind of a personality herself, which is quite artistic through her clothes. <laughs> and yeah. For so your was, that, was that a result of you photographing her or was that a result of, of just her becoming? Kind of um, no, I guess it was her own way, she, or her own presence. Okay. 
made and yeah but it's quite a good um, possibility for me <laughs> and okay. the pictures of myself are mostly just capturing my um, kind of neutral position to see myself more neutral what do you mean by neutral um, for example when you look at yourself in the mirror you always are not able to perceive or gain all the information from the mirror because it's just subjective and when you take a picture you're able to um, look at it for a longer while and just take it apart and make sections out of it so it's quite um, more objective than a subjective matter or procedure. Mm. So by looking at my pictures for a while I realize some points or gestures I made which reflect, uh, reflect my psychological state or mental state. I mean, I, I feel also that taking self-portraits is many times kind of like penetrating into your unconsciousness. Um, and that's why I mentioned dreams before. So I really relate. Um, I think sometimes for me, I don't know how you feel, but I take a self-portrait and I don't totally get it. And only a month or two later, I'm like, oh, okay, that's why this expression is there or this knife is in the picture or so <laughs> um, so I, I relate to you know to this process of photographing yourself in order to see something that you can't otherwise see Deb Deb how about you do you do you take photographs do you take photographs of yourself or do you uh, uh, actually I'm really into street photography you know yeah. uh, like uh, I, I love to shoot streets because uh, India is a very rich country, uh, you know, uh, the means of, uh, by means of cultures, or, uh, you know, colors, everything. Okay, so I love street photography. I seldom do, you know, uh, self-portraits or something. Or, uh, actually, I don't have a Facebook page right now. I had, I deleted it. Well, you yes, have Google, Google Plus. You have Google Plus page. <laughs> yes, yes, Google guys will be happy. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, uh, and uh, when I had a Facebook Facebook page, I I didn't have my pictures in it because uh, I thought that uh, you know uh, my idea of self portrait is something like uh, maybe uh, something abstract like uh, maybe non living things also mm -hmm. like a uh, hand cart maybe something okay uh, something maybe a uh, full or empty glass maybe okay uh, <laughs> which actually yes uh, because which actually you know portrays my mood or my inner self you can uh, say okay yes. that's my <laughs> that i call self portrait <laughs> uh, for me <laughs> eleanor you seem to you seem to incorporate quite a few kind of still lifes and objects into your work as well i mean like you even mentioned the knife or sometimes you incorporate fruit or you have you right. know uh, you know all sorts right. of kind of little symbols i mean even if even if you are in the picture those those uh, those things those still lifes those those objects seem to kind of represent something about you as well. So maybe you could kind of talk a little bit about that. Right. I, I think that many times it's more close-ups than still lives, but they do feel for me like still lives. So yeah. after I gave birth, um, there is an image of my belly with a C-section scar and the stretch marks, and it's a close-up of the belly, and it's a self-portrait um, that showed more than if I was showing the whole body or, or the face. Mm. Um, and. I think it sometimes has to be, for me, it talks about vulnerability and things that we usually hide, especially as a woman, maybe, but not only, um, you know, the little lines, the, 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 the signs of time. And I tend to make a close up on them, but also on my children when it's not self portrait. So I was just photographing a tooth coming out the first adult tooth of my son. So it's a, <laughs> tight close-up but it's a portrait of him so yeah it's been used not only for self-portrait purposes and do you i mean eleanor do you do you ever take photographs of um i mean do you ever photograph other things apart from yourself or your family or or i mean in your within your artwork as well i mean do you ever kind of use um uh photography in the way that deb's talking about where where he's making photographs of the rest of the world but he's he he sees those pictures as still being a representative of him and kind of self-portraits in some way. I do shoot for magazines, and some of those assignments I do see as a continuation of, of my own work, and I relate very personally to them. 
Mm. Uh, but when I choose to make pictures, it's usually myself and my family, or I create people, I give birth to two people in order to take pictures of them. <laughs> um, uh, but many assignments that I get, especially if it talks about real people, real stories, and I get the permission, which I'm usually a little shy to do myself, mm. let's say photographing in the street, for me is really difficult. I get, um, I, I just can't do it. I can like go in the street with a camera. Um, my husband does it a lot and I'm inspired by what he does, but I need the permission or the invitation. And, and then I take pictures of a family or of a child. I just did a story about a boy. And, and I, as I said, I relate very personally to it. I actually in my college uh, I have a photography club that I founded okay <laughs> we often go out <laughs> we often go out in the streets and <laughs> actually uh, photograph people maybe their expressions their lines everything uh, yes uh, they are uh, like Elena said like uh, these are very you know um, attached uh, emotional attachment I feel with them but uh, for self portraits I prefer, you know, non-living subjects, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> because uh, uh, just like Elena said, like, uh, uh, and I also found her pictures like very, you know, very intense, like very direct, like she directly actually um, uh, took pictures of herself. Uh, what I, uh, I, I like uh, for me, if I, you know, attempt to do that, I will become, I think, very conscious, like, uh, uh, my inner self, like my, uh, you know, uh, unconscious self will not be, you know, able to speak for those pictures. Okay. So I will be very conscious. I will be very conscious. So it's uh, very, I, I think uh, it's subject to practice a lot. <laughs> like uh, you take your <laughs> unconscious pictures or something. Yes. I forgot to mention before that um, before I started with photography, I was studying acting and theater. So I think it has a lot to do with what I'm doing in self-portraits. And it's not that I'm not conscious and not self-aware. I am, but I am. And it's not acting because it's a, it's a moment of my life that I'm going back into. Uh, so it's, it's, it's the same as Dev. I feel the same. I feel self-conscious. I just ignore it and go back into the moment, into the role. Of, of what happened five minutes ago or, or five days ago. Yeah. Um, but it's a choice. It's, it's not just happening. Uh, you asked me just a while be, uh, ago, like, uh, do I have a picture of, you know, my street which uh, doesn't represent, the, you know, uh, India or its culture or something, but it represents me? Yes. I think I do have one. Okay. Uh, just send a chat. Can you get it? <laughs> This, uh -oh, here uh, we go. You can get it. I can't see it yet. Are you trying to do a screen share? No, no, no. Uh, okay. I just uh, sent you uh, your okay. chat message. Oh, okay. I'll look chat. At... Okay. okay. Uh, I will tell you a story. Like uh, when uh, I was very young, okay, and yeah. there was a you know communal conflict between Hindu and Muslims uh, in India. Okay. okay, and it was a big one. Okay, uh, then uh, I remember, uh, you know, faintly I remember my mother was carrying me, you know, in her lap and uh, my mother and father was, you know, running through the streets. Mm. Okay, I faintly remember this. Okay, uh, when uh, actually just uh, two, three weeks ago, I went to Cal uh, Kolkata, you know, uh, for photographing streets. Yes. Then I found this just moment. Okay, and this reminded me of that, you know, long lost memory or something okay it doesn't represent india or its people or anything but it represents me i think and can you describe that photograph is it a pic what what because i can't see the photograph at the moment but maybe you could describe the picture too. oh okay it's called the unrest okay the unrest the uh, photograph is a you know complete mess like uh there's some people are you know <laughs> it's a night shot actually yeah. in kolkata street night shot Okay, people are running, uh, some people are chasing after them. Okay, it's kind of thing, okay. Eleanor, do you ever kind of, do you find yourself not only documenting or photographing or expressing the kind of uh, present in your life? Because like I said, with your work, you've kind of followed yourself from uh, daughter to, you know, girlfriend to wife to mother. 
But um, do you ever find that you're making photographs now that actually represent a time in your life that's that's long gone or or part of your childhood or, or anything like that? I found that it happened more when I photographed my mother and, and my parents. Mm. Um, I was trying to go back to moments of childhood and to talk about things that happened when I was five or ten. But when I'm photographing my children, it's a different feeling. I actually, if anything, I feel like I'm sometimes trying to photograph the future or to <laughs> look into how things will be when they're older um, or when they're more a part of me. Um, okay. So. Do you ever see? I mean, do you ever see reflections of yourself in their in their childhood, or are you more kind of conscious of their adult characteristics? What I see is a better understanding of my mother and my father, and you know, being a parent myself yeah. um, makes you feel differently about understanding what your parents went through when you were a <laughs> little. So it's a whole cycle of photographing things that make you think about things and understand things. But it, it's funny, and I actually never thought about it that when I photographed my parents, it was more jumps to the past and photographing my children. Maybe because when you become a parent, you're more worried and you're thinking about the future. So it's more in my my conscious mind somehow. But I, I would imagine that in the pictures that you take of yourself as in the, in the kind of role of a mother, you must see your own mother in those pictures as well. Right, right. I see the what's similar but what's also very different and also i have an element that i'm trying to deal with in the self-portraits and then in photographing my children of raising children that are americans as an israeli yeah. so the cultural gap of you know and, and the identity that is different um yeah so that's another another element and actually recently i started shooting more outside for the first time, I think I'm accepting the fact that the streets of New York City and the Dwen Reed and the Chase Bank and all those things are a part of my work. And I think it's because I have to accept the fact that I'm a mother of two American children and I am American, I'm an American citizen, and it's time to make the streets my, my place to photograph and therefore my home. So it took me about 15 years to feel that in New York, but it's finally <laughs> happening. Um, and I have to bring my own children to shoot in the street. I still, I don't have the carriage to go out, just me and the camera, and take street pictures. Maybe you could walk us through your process a little bit. Just tell us a bit about, you know, how you get from from an idea to a to an image that that you actually kind of um, enjoy or or feel is successful. Um, I feel that it's a very elusive process and it's hard to know. I mean, many times the ideas I have about a picture are just what makes me take a picture, but the picture ends up being about something totally different. Mm. So um, there well, is an us, image. Tell us, tell us your secrets. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I really have no see I think the secret, <laughs> if anything, is to be, especially with children, to not stick to your idea, not the way that's the way I should to let intuition, to let what happened in that moment be a part of the picture. And if it ended up being about something totally different that, than what you intended to, mm -hmm. just accept it and embrace it and go with it and make it what it is. Yeah. If yeah. it's if it's not confusing. I don't know <laughs> if you relate to it, but I think all photographers relate to it. You have yeah. a beginning point and then you just go with what happens because yeah. this is this is the real thing absolutely i mean especially it is part of um don't have to control all over the things and all of the end of the process because um there was once um school task for creating a photograph and i decided to take um yeah a self-portrait so i was working for this picture six weeks and in the last week I had the shooting and it came just different in a totally different way out as I planned so but still it was good and it's mostly the same with the other pictures. I have a question right um, I was uh, actually I was looking uh, browsing through your uh, astonishing work uh, and in your album Pain Okay, I wondered like uh, every images, uh, you know, I felt very compositionally perfect. Like uh, uh, 
uh, it's very eye pleasing also uh, like i was wondering like uh, you were in such pain like you were in back pain i think so uh, in that time how did you manage to take this those photographs like uh, what was your like workflow or setup or actually in that thing um i think in a way i i totally understand what you're saying uh, but I think in a way, the images exist as, as, a, as a way to escape the pain. So I felt that the only time I could not think about my pain or my body or the limits of my body was when I was using it to do something else, uh, to take pictures of it. And I was thinking more in a creative way. So it was, it was therapeutic. It was a way to deal with the pain. Um, and by the way, not all the images turn out good. So it, it was sometimes the process is therapeutic and it helps you to be creative. It doesn't mean you, you'll end up with a good image and that can be very frustrating. But um, luckily, some of them did come out well. <laughs> <laughs> For me, the interesting thing about this series is how many people related to it mm. and um, the conversation and the dialogues that happen as a result of what I was going through. And I mean, this is true also for photographing myself as a mother and photographing things that you feel might be not normal or weird or wrong. And once you put them out there, you get so many feedbacks and, and usually positive feedbacks, not, not even feedbacks about the quality of an image as an image, but about the experience. And it, it makes you understand that you're, it's, it's so universal, so yeah. many of those feelings and moments. I was just wondering, I mean, you went through different stages of life as daughter, wife, mother, and during all this time you've been photographing and out of that some topics came across. And so I was wondering what would be your next project? Um, I'm still working on photographing my children. Yeah. And I think and I hope it will result in a book when the project is about 10 years old and they're moving into a different stage of their lives, more into their early teens. Um, but what will happen after that, I can't know because I'm not the kind of photographer who works on project. Whatever will be there in my life will be my next project. So, um, you know, it might involve my children, my parents, that divorced two years ago. It's hard to know because I, I work in an intuitive way. So I think what will be the most interesting or significant part of my life in three or four years, that will be the next project. I have a question for Elena. Like, uh, I saw your, you know, your website, every photo is in it. Uh, I just found only one photo. <laughs> Uh, in uh, only one photograph in your, you know, uh, that album, uh, a diary of a dancer, that you have uh, shot yourself through a mirror or something. Other than this particular, just one single shot, all your photos are, you know, uh, very direct, very, you know, intense, direct. Uh, you know, did you ever consider shooting yourself indirectly or some something like uh, through a reflection or? Uh, through something, through glasses or anything, did you ever consider? Dev is giving me some interesting ideas here that I haven't <laughs> thought about. <laughs> Tell me more. What do you have in mind, Dev? <laughs> you could photograph yourself on Google+. Plus. <laughs> <laughs> that will be the next project, okay? <laughs> do you have any ideas, Dev? No, what, what you... uh, no, no. Just, uh, I just, uh, whenever I like... No, I feel like uh, shooting somebody else or any um, like me also. I always think of some external object. I always, you know, like to see myself or everybody else through some object, like um, not directly into them, like through some objects with some objects. So I was thinking that uh, did Elena ever consider shooting through a glass or within a glass or like these things? Uh, I will, I will like, give it a thought. Any... <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, I know that my work tends to be direct. Um, and, and for some people, even so direct, it's disturbing. Um, and I don't know why it is. I think it's hard to know the way our vo voice sounds a certain way. It's hard to know why you shoot in a certain way, why this is the way that you photograph always. Um, 
so I, I, I'm not going against it, uh, but I know it's very direct. I don't know, have you ever felt like uh, during an exhibition when you saw a picture that you felt, oh, I shouldn't unveil this truth or I shouldn't show this picture? Some kind of uncomfortable feeling? Um, no. <laughs> okay. No, but what I do feel, I think most of the work that I've shown until now was of my my adult, you know, my my parents, my husband, my grandparents, and my brother, they're all the adult. Now that I'm photographing my children, I am much more careful with the edit. So um, I will, and that's why it's been eight years of the project and only many, as many as 20 images were shown. So with the work of my children, I'm more careful and I will look at them again and again. And I've edited out a lot of images that I'm just, I know I'm not going to, some, I even deleted the, the file. I'm like, I don't want to have, this is too much. Um, so I, I have this conscious with the work of my children, but since I just started showing it, I think I will have more of this kind of feeling you are talking about um, in regards to the work of the children, but not so much of, of other moments. Um, I've spoken to Emmett Gowen, who's, who I know never spoke to Sally Mann, but I've read a lot of what she, the, the interviews and seen the documentaries about her. And um, I think what I got from her mainly is that our children will end up rebelling against us, angry at us, you know, criticizing us, no matter what we'll do. And being a photographer is just another field that they might go against. Um, but I don't think that I, it didn't solve the problem. It's still a very complex issue to photograph your own children. Mm. Aaron, I have a question. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. One of my friends, like, uh, after seeing your work, uh, you know, marked yourself as feminist. Like, uh, uh, do you consider yourself a feminist or something? Or like your work? <laughs> I don't want to talk about yourself, but just your work. Do you consider your work as a feminist work or something? Um, uh. Yes. I mean, the bottom line is yes. And I think because of women that came before me, like Susan Meisel as and Nan Golden and Andy Leibowitz, I can now be a, a gentler feminist, but I'm still a feminist. It's just that some of the road was already walked by, but by other photographers. But yes, the work is about being a woman and and seeing the world through feminine eyes, and it it is yes. feminist. Maybe not in the radical way, but it's very feminine. All right. <laughs> So you can uh, tell him I, that I'm a feminist and he better be a word. <laughs> 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 well, uh, you just said uh, you just said that uh, the bottom line is you're feminist. Uh, but you say, just said that uh, you actually deleted some of your works that uh, that is too much, you said. Uh, so what is the, you know, upper line for you? What is the what? The uh, what line. is the upper line? Oh, um, like, no, I, I was talking mainly about images of my children and okay. um, less about images of myself, my husband, my parents, okay. where all right. they're all seeing the images before I show them and they understand the exposure. So it's less of a problem. I think it's an interesting kind of uh, question, though, in the sense that, that in your work, um, you know, you often define yourself within... Um, what would be considered quite traditional roles uh, that women that women play in the sense of uh, whether it's as a as a dancer or as a as a daughter or a mother, um, but you're obviously kind of ex you're exposing something new about those roles that that generally aren't kind of um, placed within a, a art context or in a in a public context. So I'm just curious. I mean, I, yeah, maybe you could talk a little bit more about that idea of of, of being quote unquote a, a feminist. You know, but but <laughs> but through but but through the kind of portrayal of yourself as a you know I mean, the, I the mean, role of a woman. I, I feel again that feminist. I am. I feel that I'm a humanist, and I feel that men and women should be should have the social freedom to be who they are and who they want to be. It doesn't have to be confined like men has to do this and women. It should be more open, and it should be decided within couples and families 
what is right and how they can make it work. Yeah. And the challenge should be there of defining the roles. But um, and so I'm a feminist, but it, I feel the same way about men. I feel the same way about all people. We should just be able to have the, the freedom, the financial and social freedom to create our own lives and, and to, yeah. to make choices that are right for us. If that's so, if that's a more, I would say, accurate definition. Alina, is there someone have influenced you a lot, like uh, photographically? Like uh, for me, it's Steve McCurry. Steve McCurry is some yeah. somewhat, uh, you know, Katya Bresa, Ragurai. Uh, these people have influenced me a lot for my photography. For your photography, who are these people? Um, uh, many photographers from Mary Ellen Mark to, as I mentioned before, Nan Goldin and Saliman and Tierney Giron, Emmett Gowin, Nicholas Nixon, um, Robert Frank, Kodelka. So uh, there is, okay. I think it can be, I mean, definitely Larry Sultan, all the photographers who photograph their family. I am immediately a fan. Um, it's very rare that I won't relate to someone's photographing their own lives. Um, but also people, as I said, like Robert Frank or like Inez and Vinu, the fashion photographers who I think are brilliant image makers. So also photographers from different disciplines. I think if I can say anything is to just really find your way of doing things, not only find your way of taking pictures and what images you want to make, but also how you run your career and how how you kind of define yourself as a person and, and as an artist. It doesn't have to be the pushy, pushy type, you know, it just has to be true to who you are and how you work and your pace. Um, so this is a very important thing to figure out. For me, it's always a struggle to figure out and redefine what's right for me, what can I do right now? And who am I when I'm coming to talk about my work? What do I want to say with the work? It's all actually, at the end, very personal. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks very much, Eleanor. Thank uh, you so much, thank guys. You. Thanks, Aaron. And thanks, Deb. Thanks, Eugene. It was Eugene. really very inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. It was <laughs> okay. a pleasure. Thank all you, right. Guys. Thanks very much. Thank you, Eleanor. Great. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Could tell us a little bit about um, how she first came to photography and um, how she also started beginning to, to photograph herself and becoming comfortable with that as a form of, of uh, expressing herself as well as documenting her, her, herself. So Eleanor, please. <laughs> so, I mean, I started, I started young and I actually started by photographing my mother. Um, I took my father's camera and started taking snapshots of my mother as she woke up from an afternoon nap. And I was immediately in love with photography and started to photograph her more. And then my father, and then I started making self portraits. Um, I was doing it in black and white with my, as I said, father, old Canon. And later on, I did the Israeli army service for two years. And after that, went to art school and continued to photograph my family using a lot of self portraiture as well. I think what kept me there was realizing how much more I see about myself and the relationships and I mean and my life through photographing myself. So it was like looking into your dreams. Um, you can freeze a frame from a dream that helps you understand who you are and how you relate to the people you love most, how they relate to you. So it's a form of self discovering, I would say. I think with my mom, the most interesting thing was that I was able to look at her not as my mother. I could look at what kind of a woman she is, her sexuality, her looks, the relationship between her and my father. <clears throat> and at time, I felt like I'm giving them stage uh, to show me who they are. They also began to be interested in being photographed in a specific way. They had requests and demands, and it was also a way for them to express themselves. And I felt that when I'm joining to the frame, something is even becoming more, I'm not the photographer behind the camera doing whatever I want. I'm also vulnerable. I'm also showing something about myself. And, and, and it's a different dynamic. The life there was pretty different. And here it's kind of 
more easy. So through these pictures in a quite aesthetic way, it is possible to enhance this change of life. Okay. And because my mother changed in a way and she became um, kind of a personality herself, which is quite artistic through her clothes. <laughs> and yeah. For so your was, that, was that a result of you photographing her or was that a result of, of just her becoming? Kind of um, no, I guess it was her own way she or her own process okay mate and yeah but it's quite a good um, possibility for me <laughs> and okay. the pictures of myself are mostly just capturing my um kind of neutral position to see myself more neutral what do you mean by neutral um for example when you look at yourself in the mirror you always I think, and it's something that Nan Golden talked about, that when you are also photographing yourself naked or also photographing your flaws, it becomes something that you do to yourself and to the environment. So it doesn't put you in the like powerful position of being the photographer that just looking at other people. You're becoming a part of it. It opens up the people you photograph. It's a different feeling. Okay. Okay. Um... I'm just curious if either of our participants, I mean, do either of you make photographs and, and if, if so, what kind of photographs and if you actually photograph yourself anytime? I do some photography, but most of them is more for the artistic and documentary reason. Okay. Yeah, photograph my family, oh yeah, my mom and <laughs> myself. So yeah, most of that is just for capturing the time and also reflecting it in more artistic way. I mean, show it in a kind of different perspective because before we used to live in Russia and... Hello everybody, welcome to the uh, third Google Photography Prize uh, Hangout with Photography Experts. Today we're hanging out with um, Eleanor Carucci, uh, an incredible photographer who's been doing incredible work for, for many, many years, and in particular in the field of self-portraiture. Um, she's developed a, a very strong reputation and, a, and a, an incredible um, career and creative practice, specifically through kind of portraying herself and portraying relationships between herself and her family members, her, her friends, her boyfriend who turned into her husband, her children, and so on, so um, her parents. Um, so, um, so today's conversation is going to revolve primarily around um, photography, obviously, in general, and the, the, the power photography has to allow us to express ourselves. But in particular, I'm interested in talking about how um, people use self-portraiture as a means of not only self-documentation, but also self-expression. So to start with, I just was wondering if um, maybe Eleanor 